Hi, this is Chongqiu, and I'm really glad that I can share my work about the uh, privacy preserving distributed average consensus using additive CQ sharing. It is uh, uh, already published in uh, Recipco 2019. And this is a goal work with Ignacio Cascudo and uh, Matt Christensen. So I will follow this agenda to introduce you my work and then let's start with the motivation. So why is privacy important? Here is a very simple example that, that uh, it shows the daily power assumption of your household. And we can see that the power consumption doesn't seem very very important data, right? It's not your fingerprint and it's not your facial image, it's not your bank account. But but actually from this simple information, we can infer a lot of private information about yourself. So for example, it, uh, people people can know that whether you have this disability or illness or how many people live in your house or are you aware from holiday or not. So it's actually a lot of information can be leaked from this very simple power assumption data. So we get the conclusion that there's no real separation between your data and yourself. So try not to class, so the, the, we should ring the bell and say that, try not to classify your data into some very important one or some not important, they are all very important. So it's very necessary to do the privacy thing. And uh, another thing here, we are focusing on the distributed system. Why distributed system is uh, important or is, uh, is good? So uh, generally, a uh, uh, centralized system is that the whole, in the whole system, we just pass off, we just uh, send the data to the cloud or to the server so that the server will process the, take care of all the computation and processing. So in this kind of system, it's very simple. But the thing is that it's very vulnerable to the attack. For example, if the central server is being hacked, the whole system is broken. So let's go to the distributed system. So in the distributed system, we try not to depend on any single party. We, we require every single party to contribute to the whole system in terms of the computation and also the communication. So in this sense, even when people is dropped or when party is being hacked, it's the whole system can still run. It's very, it's very flexible and robust to the attack. And the, the last thing we would like to motivate is the, why are we focusing on the consensus example? Actually, we, as we will know that consensus is a very fundamental and important problem that is being widely used in like uh, block, blockchain technology and also data mining. So we would like to start from scratch from very simple problem, the average consensus. So let's see the, what's the setup of the privacy preserving distributed average. So what we would like to do is we would like to compute the average of their whole network. And each party in this network have certain private value, let's say is I. And the goal is that we want to know the average, but we don't want to reveal our own information just to assume that we would like to compute the average salary in a group of people, but nobody wants to reveal his own, nobody wants to tell the true salary to, to his colleagues or to, to others, so it's my secret. So in this sense, we have two requirements. The, one, the first one is that, of course, we want to get the correct average. We want to get the correct average result, and the, in, the, in the meantime, we don't want to reveal our privacy. So how can we do that? So existing methods, trying to uh, uh, we briefly summarize into three kinds of methods. The first one is the, the encryption method. We try to first encrypt our data and then try to compute the, uh, compute the based on the encrypted data so that we, we never release our real information. This kind of approach is very straightforward, but the thing is that it's very, very, uh, it's very time consuming. It's, uh, it has a quite high computational complexity. And the second approach is that we try to have some uh, trusted third party, let's say a server outside the network that it can assign certain numbers to the whole, to each different party. So we can use these numbers to mask our data. So we send a masked following 
to to our to our to the whole network so that we we don't we don't uh, send our private value directly we send some masculine value so as long as all these all these numbers sum to zero let's say it's noise as long as we make sure that all the noise sum to zero we can we know that the uh the final average will be still correct right but in this case we require trusty third party it might not be very practically implementable in uh, real cases and the the third approach is differential privacy it's very popular and the, the main thing is that the, so every single party try to generate the noise by themselves and as long as we make sure that the the noise is is zero mean so so we can make sure that statistically the noise can sum to zero. But the, the problem here is that we cannot have infinite and many iterations in the whole system. So usually the accuracy will be compromised. So it means that the final average result will be not as accurate as the known private one. So in the proposed approach, we would like to address all the limitations uh, in the existing work by using the secret sharing. So what is secret sharing? Secret sharing is actually very simple. Like imagine that you want to share one secret. So what you will do, you will separate, you will divide your secret into a number of pieces and you send to every, every single party in the network one piece of your information so that if not all of the parties are, are malicious or they try to, if not all the, Parties are bad guys, they try to guess your information, then you are safe. So in this sense, we try to define our risk into, into different parts of the whole network. And we, we rely on that uh, the only majority, like um, most of the people in the network, they can be not, uh, uh, let, let me re rephrase it. We rely on that not all the people in the network are bad guys, right? so that we can make sure our secret is still is still safe here we explicitly use a dtp sharing so a dtp sharing is we try to we try to make sure that the information we try to set uh we try to split our information into several pieces and then we make sure that all the small pieces sum over equal to the my own secret so that for example here in this equation, we can see that the X is my original secret, and I try to split it into n pieces, and I make sure that the sum over this order X i is equal to S in this uh, in the finite field from in the finite field defined by the per sufficient number big number p. And a good thing about additive secret sharing is that it actually it actually very robust to their attack. For example, if imagine imagine if uh, there are n parties in the network and except yourself or other parties are um, bad guys, or they, they try to collect all the information together to infer your secret. But in this sense, your secret is still safe because your piece of information is not your field. People doesn't know your piece of information. They only have n minus one piece of information. So they cannot reconstruct your secret. So it's it's actually very robust to the to the attack of this system using additive secret sharing. So how can we do that in the uh, in in the random random connecting network that cannot that may not be fully connected? So here, since we we are not connecting, we cannot talk to all the people in the network. So in this sense, we try to split our information in terms of in terms of how many neighbors I have. So for example, here the P2 have two neighbors, P1 and P3. So what he do is that he try to send he try to send out two random numbers to P1 and P2, and P1 and P2 also were sent back to one random number to X2. And what X2 will do, he will sum over all the, he will plus all the information he received and minus all the information he sent out. So then he makes sure that all the, all the random numbers eventually sum to zero. So in this sense, after doing the DT secret sharing, each, each node do the DT secret sharing between his neighborhood. And instead of releasing our original secret S, X, 
and we try, then we will have a new network with a master value this. So in this sense, we make, we make sure, we make sure that our information is protected by the addictive secret sharing procedure that we try, instead of releasing X directly, we release S, a mask value, so that we can protect our secret. Here we can say, we can say that since, we, since all the information we send out and all the information we receive, we try to do the plus and minus. So it means that we, the, all the information flow over the network is being canceled. All the noise we add into the, into the network is, can cancel out by each other so that we can see here the sum of all the Xi and the sum of the Xi is the same in this finite field. So that we so so imagine the whole the whole system flow is that we first have a bunch a network with private values and after applying additive secret sharing we have a network with the mask value or, or we say obfuscated value that contain no information about the original value and then we can apply any distributed average algorithm to compute the average and then we can finally get the result. So one thing to mention about uh, uh, privacy is that we, we need to consider the adversarial model. It means that we, we may have some people, some parties in the network that are not honest, they may not, they may not uh, collaborating, they may not uh, follow the protocol and they may try to learn your uh, other people's information from, let's see here, the P1 and the P4, they are malicious and they try to get the information of other, other nodes. And uh, here we can see that a good thing about addictive secret sharing is that as long as there are two parties are honest and they are connected with each other, even if all other nodes are corrupt, so in, in the whole system, only two parties are honest and uh, all other parties are corrupt. These two parties are connected. We can imagine that the information flow below from PI to PJ, this two honest party, is unknown to the corrupted party. So in this sense, we can say that they, even if there are N minus two nodes corrupt, they cannot infer what is XI, what is XJ. So it is, it is still safe. So the whole protocol is the safe even under n minus two corruption. Let's go to the experimental validation. We randomly generate a, a network with uh, 50 nodes. And uh, we can see we tried three different kinds of distributed average algorithm. So we so all the all the solid line is known is the traditional, traditional distributed average algorithm that we try to just we try to we try to apply directly on the secret value. We don't do any processing. And all the dash line is the is the proposed method that we try to apply additive secret sharing before that and uh, and then and then use the, the distributed average afterwards. We can see that all the uh, all the dash line and the, the uh, the solid line, they converge to the same solution. It means that the proposed approach gets uh, get, uh, exact accuracy as the non-private one. So we don't, we never, we didn't compromise uh, the accuracy. And as a comparison between the existing work, so we can see that the proposed work is very simple compared to compared to the last last column. The, the encryption method it needs is computationally very heavy, but the proposed method is only linearly it only requires linear computation, so it's very simple. And compared to the differential privacy approach, we don't have any trade-off between the privacy and the accuracy. And compared to the trusted third party approach, we don't require any trusted party. We can, we just uh, communicate with our neighbors. We, it's a fully distributed network in a fully distributed setting. So in this sense, we address all the limitations in the existing method. So let's go to the conclusion. So the conclusion is 
generally, like we propose a very computationally and communicationally efficient algorithm to achieve privacy preserving distributed algorithm. And uh, compared to the differential privacy approach, we don't have any trade-off between the privacy and accuracy. And the thing that we, the difference that uh, we require any honest node to have one on its neighbor so that we can protect the privacy, but this is not required in differential privacy. So this is one drawback of the proposed approach that you should be aware of is if you are using that. And another good thing about the proposed approach is we don't slow down the convergence rate. So we don't change the convergence rate, we just do a pre-processing to make the data secure first and then do the processing. And then we, we should know the prior knowledge of the total network number, so how many nodes in the network. All right, thanks a lot. And uh, if you have any questions, then since this paper is, is published already, you can find out the paper and you can send me an email if you have any questions. Thanks a lot.